Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge we have from 1830. Well, that's when the company was founded. Bellows, whoops, too much glare. Bellows Club Whiskey. <clears throat> Bellows. Bellows and Company. But it's really a Jim Beam production. A Beam Company production, sorry. But Beam no longer owns Bellows. They sold it to Luxco <clears throat> about six years ago. So <clears throat> that's who makes it now. Lux Luxco of St. Louis. The Lux family. But Bellows with the housefly, the famous. Housefly label. Um... <clears throat> was an independent company at one time. <clears throat> it says American blended whiskey, it doesn't say Kentucky blended. Could this be one of those that um, was produced in Indiana and then just blended and bottled in Kentucky? Well, yeah, the clues would point that way. <clears throat> I think this is about from night, I'm sorry, Mom. My throat. I think this is from about 1994, this bottle. So we're talking about 25 years old. It says blended and bottled at Frankfurt in Claremont, Kentucky. It doesn't say distilled in Kentucky. And it's, and it's saying American blended whiskey, not Kentucky blended. So probably they had a contract with Seagram's to produce the base whiskey. And they blended it with Jim Beam. And to me, they went crazy with the rye. Maybe they put old overhalt in it because it's too high rye. It's like they pranked their customers. When I taste it, I say, oh, no, that's a liter bottle, and it was $8.99. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the price. $8.99 at international market, and they're all gone now. <clears throat> they sold all their stock. Now, here is one that you can still buy, still in production. Not The, the, the club whiskey has gone. I see I see it at a Chinese restaurant here, one bottle, but the, it's you can't, it's no longer produced. You might find an old bottle somewhere. American blend, Grand Legacy. I don't know what's the deal with the crown and the copper pot still. Beautiful plastic bottle, haha. -ha. <clears throat> blended whiskey with natural flavors. And pretty much all American blended whiskeys have natural flavors, so they're it's like when they say aged in oak. I mean, they're all aged in oak. So it's it's just like a redundant statement. But for people that don't know, it might be impressive to them. Bottled by the Legacy Distilling Company, Louisville, Kentucky. Notice it doesn't say produced by or blended by. It simply says bottled by. <clears throat> so could Sazerac be buying their base products from... Indiana, <clears throat> which is now Midwest Grain Products. They bought, took that over. Seagram's imploded, so they took that over. Yes, it could be, and probably is. I talked to uh, the tour guide on the tour two years ago at Barton, a Sazerac distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. And she said, yeah, they get all their grain spirits from <clears throat> Indiana, MGP, because they don't even have their own columns still anymore for the vodka. They just simply buy it. It's probably cheaper just because MGP is a big bulk producer. They produce a lot of bulk stuff and a lot of companies buy it and just blend it and take it to a rectifying plant and blend it and bottle it. Because if you get on MG. P's website, they'll tell you, you can choose from this many different gins, this many different vodka levels, this many straight bourbon levels. And so then you can either tell them how you want it done, blend it, or you can just buy the components and do it yourself. If you're a company, you know, a wholesaler, a, a, a producer, you can't buy that as a consumer over there yet. But they said they MGP is going to start coming out with their own and they may have already their own uh, brands. We'll see. So, poured a little too much, I think. 
too much club whiskey. <clears throat> club whiskey is a shade lighter, I think. Probably has less coloring. <laughs> it's amber, and this one's a little more caramel, the um, Grand Legacy. And if you live in a state that allows liquor sales at a pharmacy, you can go to CVS and check out their uh, their brands. And they have a lot of other, you know, regular name brands. <sighs> Will I ever try any more brand legacies like their Scotch or their Canadian? I might Canadian. I might. I might. I might. Dependent. Depending, I am so backlogged, I've never even reviewed Crown Royal, which is sickening. Silly, really, it's silly, because that would give me the most views. Well, that argues against, some people will say, you just do stuff to get views, which is so wrong. I have to laugh at that, because if I was chasing views, wouldn't I be doing Crown Royal instead of this? And... If I'm going to do cognac, I wouldn't do some off the wall French cognac that nobody ever heard about. Well, all cognac is French. I shouldn't even say French. I would do the name brands, Hennessy, Remy Martin. I've never done Remy Martin. I've done Saint Remy, which is from Remy Martin. So it, it's silly for people to say that. Uh, I don't know why. Either they're jealous or they have anger, resentment problems or something. But um. I'm just doing whatever I see, and I say, oh, that looks interesting or peculiar. That usually is what it is. looks peculiar. <clears throat> or they'll say, you do natural ice again and again just to get views. Well, isn't that true? I mean, I like dealing with it because it's an interesting product. But whether people watch or not is up to them. Oh, well, enough of that. Uh, but I'm not doing it. I'm talking about chasing views. I'm not an enterpriser. A marketeer. I'm just a reviewer and mostly a viewer. I'm more of a viewer than a reviewer, than a reviewer. I like to watch people's videos and make comments. Um, I smell a little cornbread here, and I think that could be sourdough, sour mash bourbon. It's a little old smelling. <laughs> Like an old house, this old house. And old, it for blended bourbon, four years is kind of old. The Grand Legacy is at least four years old too, though, because it's got no age statement. And it, that's the law. That's the law. If there's no age statement, it has to be aged at least four years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, is the, this is the bellows. This is the club whiskey. Oh, no. Now, the aroma's okay. It's okay, boy, when you taste it. It's got like this unusual spicy character. It's like spearmint or peppermint. Like, why would this be so spicy? It's an inexpensive blended whiskey, 80-20 blend. There is no way, no how. They've got to be putting high rye in it. It's got to have a lot of rye. I'm telling you now. It's like a prank. <laughs> oh, well, here we go. I'll taste it for what it's worth. Like that old song, For What It's Worth. Candy sugar, sweetness, candy corn, a little bit of um, wood and oak. Wood and oak makes sense. Huh? Wood and char, charred oak. It's basic. It's just basic. There's a little age on it, though. It's not too young. Like, it's hard to describe how you could tell they're young or old, but you can kind of pick that up. Some kind of like a deviation from the norm. Like, if it's young, it'll be um, too sharp or something. And more age, it'll mellow it out. I guess that's how you describe it. You can get grain alcohol underneath alcohol, grain spirits, like water. There's even like water tasting in here because 
they told me at the distillery that I said, how do they go from 190 proof down to 80? She let us taste some of the corn distillate, you know, the uh, grain alcohol, 190 proof. <sighs> she said, they just add water. <laughs> just keep gauging it. And they add tap water from the faucet until it goes down to, oh, stop. It's at 80 proof. <laughs> they said, that's it. <laughs> it's not complicated, she said. All right. Do they sell the grain distillate? Yes. Grain alcohol. Yeah, it's 190 proof. It's called diesel. You don't want to drink diesel. Oh, <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> Why you do this to me, Donnie? I mean, come on, man. I don't know what Jim Beam's all about with this. This was back in the 90s. They got new ownership now. Back in the 90s, maybe they had a lot of hijinks. And they said, let's just make it so high ride it'll blow their minds, man. And it worked because it's blowing my mind. And I, I got to drink this whole bottle. Oh, no. <laughs> Look how much I have left. This is enough. You can see the glue on it, maybe, because um, the label was coming off, so I had to glue it with some school glue. Worked pretty well. You can't really tell it's got that on there unless the light shining through it. That's okay. Um, look at the label all chipped away. It's Oh, it's like an antique. Antique whiskey that tastes so strange. Oh, so very strange but different, unique. Won't taste like all the rest of the blended whiskey. So question, do all American blended whiskeys taste the same? You know what the answer is? Do I hear anything? Answer, no, they do not. Can the flavors fluctuate or vary wildly? Yes, here's an indication of, of that. I didn't say it was a good flavor. When I first tried it, I liked it, but now, uh-uh, uh-uh. I would not drink this on purpose. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't know what that is. What did they age it on? Spearmint, spruce tips. They age it on spruce tips. Get real, people. You never confuse it with any other, any other blended whiskey. Unless that was aged on spruce tips. Now the grand legacy, sure, you'll get you'll get that confused with everything else because it tastes like the run of the mill, ordinary blended whiskey, just bland. It's got a whiskey flavor, that twang. It's just kind of dull. Uh, none of them really are bad. Like they don't taste bad except the odd ones, but it, um, it's just inexpensive, ordinary item. But for what it is, 10.99, a 1,750 milliliter bottle is a great value. It's a really good value. You gotta have your CVS card. Um, so what I recommend it, well, That depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for nothing and you don't want to pay much and you just you want the 80 proof to mix with Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Fanta or RC Cola <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, it'd be fine because you may as well use a cheap one like that when you mix it with Coke. You're going to why would you like why would somebody buy Johnny Walker Blue Label and mix it with Coke? <laughs> but people, are, you know, they do that. I paid two hundred fifty dollars for this bottle. I'm going to mix it with Coke. So for an easy going, non-cognitive, you know, like you're not thinking about it, mixer, yeah, fine. To sit there and sip on its own merits, would I recommend it? No, it wouldn't, wouldn't. Is there any American whiskey I would recommend? Blended whiskey as a sipper on its own merits. Yeah, uh, Seagram Seven Crown, which is not designed for that. Look at their website, it's all on the rocks with all kind of mixers is what it is. It's a cocktail whiskey. 
but it's the best one. So Seagram Seven Crown can stand on its own merits. It's actually good. Like you could like drink it. It could compete with some bourbons. Really, it could. So uh, it's pretty dynamite. But you're going to pay thirteen dollars a bottle. You say, well, I want to get one for eight ninety nine a liter. Well, then you're going to get this kind of stuff. And then you might get Bellows Club Whiskey. Oh, well, it's no longer produced. So if you want to take this chance and try something crazy like this, go ahead. But oh, I mean, like you got to get mentally prepared for each sip. Oh, what is that? I can only say it's like spearmint. Are American blended whiskeys allowed to have flavoring? Yes, up to like 2%. But it said blending sherry, up to 2% blending sherry on the Tax and Trade Bureau website. They didn't say anything about spruce tips or spearmint. You know, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Okay, uh, so thank you for watching this video production. Oh, I didn't even check the labels, but that's not necessary. But I'll just check. It's not going to say GL. I mean, it is going to say GL. What am I saying? GL is the one I'm doing, Grand Legacy. There it is, GL, 1983 Mustang GL. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching this video production. And tomorrow, it's Grand Legacy versus the regular today's Bellows. Today's, the current Bellows, which is just called Bellows. What do you think of Maker's Mark, says Kevin Big Joe. Well, I've never had it. So I don't know what to think of it. But I know that everybody's always talking good about it. You know, you hear mostly positive feedback. So I would imagine it's very good. I haven't gotten around to it yet. So uh, I think, what do I think about it? I think I would like to try it. Yes, I would like to try Maker's Mark. Thanks for watching this video production, folks.